Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a super duper couple in love that loves some super sneaky Sundays. It's super sneaky Sunday! Because we're celebrating 170,000 in Definitely Not... Uh, definitely Not dip, dip, dip Games. <laughs> See, in that, it in was that. blowing my mind. It obviously, it was blowing Ken's mind because yep. he lost his ability to speak. 170,000 in the Definitely Not Definitive Games community. Um, so thank you all so much. That just feels like such an understatement. Thank you so much! It's crazy! It is crazy. And uh, so what we like to do on this channel is celebrate in different languages because uh, we've got such an international community. And so since this is like a thanks for everything that you do for this channel, um, we are doing... Uh, Thank you in, um, or many thanks in German. Yes. Vielen, vielen Dank. Yes, good okay, job. Okay, that's, uh, that, 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 that's, how, that's what we're doing, all right? <sighs> vielen vielen Dank. Dank. Thanks everybody for everything you do for this, uh, for this channel, for this community, for all your positivity, all your suggestions, and uh, just putting a smile on our face every day. Smile on our face and a smile on each other's faces. I'm exactly. so grateful for how much you all are not only kind to us, but kind to each other. It's a wonderful thing to see online and it really, it just, Gives me all the warm fuzzies. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. So we finished up playing Devil May Cry 5 uh, last week on the channel. And uh, next game is going to be God of War uh, 4. Uh, so we're going to do that next Sunday. Um, but this Sunday we're going to celebrate with uh, an incorrect summary of Devil May Cry 5 by Maxor. <laughs> an so, incorrect summary. Yeah. I love it already. Yep. There's two parts. We're going to watch both parts of it. If you want to see our Devil May Cry uh, playthrough, we got a link down below in the description of this video. We got a playlist there. We also have a playlist for all of our uh, Devil May Cry reactions we've done too, because we did like a little bit of a journey there. We had a journey. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. Gary's Mod 5 is a fighting hack and slash game where you play as a single family of Nirvana backup singers struggling <laughs> to stop mankind's ultimate foes, Virgin and Urinate, who are peaceful <laughs> environmentalists attempting to grow a tree in their yard. You play as our intrepid <laughs> heroes, Dante Inferno, Nero Claudius, and the Roman numeral 5 as they attempt and the to Roman numeral. business amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Times are tough, but fortunately, Nero is forklift certified. Along the way, you will encounter <laughs> testicular torsion, skeletons, famous YouTuber critical, the real Realization that you left the stove on downstairs and Dark Souls PvP, but with enough tenacity, strength, cunning, and force of will, I will be able to tell you about what happens in the game with remarkable accuracy. Because who would want to play Devil May Cry 5? That would be stupid. So sit, lie back, and clap, <laughs> enjoy, see, video, run, relax, and enjoy an incorrect summary of Noise Level High 5. Our story begins with Nero here in his garage, tending to his new <laughs> Lamborghini. While faced with the acquisition of knowledge, Nero finds a small man standing outside. <laughs> what is that music? Wait, what the fuck? So he steals his whole arm in one quick motion. Then he uses the arm to go to the Fuda dimension. That way he can never be seen again. So like a week passes and now the big tree exists. This is a completely unrelated incident. So resolved as the now one-armed Nero and his new friend Five are all inside. <laughs> the two head forward into a dungeon, remarking how Dante invited them over for a picnic when suddenly Nero spots a letter from the demon king Urizen. Reading the letter, it specifies that the Koopalings in him have taken the over Koopalings. the Mushroom Kingdom. And that Dante is now a permanent guest at one of his seven Koopa hotels. Nero begins traversing the Walmart garden section when he encounters <laughs> a bee. Thinking quickly, Nero just shoots the bee since guns work and are the most effective means of self-defense. You must head on without me, Nero. My bird is crashing. You're what? <laughs> Fucking Vista. Nero shoots through his enemies <laughs> until he reaches the throne room of Urinate. He finds Dante Urinate. passed out, and Urinalysis, like every true-blooded American, is in his Fox News chair. With no options, <laughs> Nero forces Urinoscopy to shift from beating up old people to beating up cripples. <laughs> Who are you people? Why are you in my house? Please leave immediately or I will have to. Yeah, Dante. Round two. Fight! So Urinine punches them to death, and the Mario brothers are forced to escape. Nero's only recourse now is to hopefully get strong enough to grow a new arm and live to challenge Uranemic again. Kylo Ren, however, <laughs> is just a fucking pussy who's not going to do <laughs> that. Even after the tree eats everyone, he's just like, I'll fucking do plants grow. So like another week passes, and now Nero is being driven by a woman, a terrible mistake. As if to spot Nero, <laughs> she drives intentionally into a group of bees. This prompts the greatest credit sequence known to mankind. It gave me a <laughs> filmmaking boner. So Nero becomes trapped in the slow motion dimension for a week until he's able to get off at a 
Atlanta. Here, Nero enters a sex shop and finally purchases a fisting device. He then uses it in legal self-defense in order to bypass the V-Rights laws of 1994. Nero's gameplay consists of expert use of his sword, along with proper mastery of his great array of vibrators. All with different <laughs> specialties and abilities. This one, for instance, vibrates the fucking electromagnetic field. Or this one, which vibrates his position in space-time. Atlanta's fucked up. Nero then hmm. proceeds to fight all two enemies that are available to him before assuming the role of a Brazilian logging company. Have you ever tried fighting a plant before? It's very easy. Get in my teleporting van. You're what? <laughs> All right. Nero proceeds to wander aimlessly through the city. Nero proceeds to fight aimlessly through the city. Along the way, he encounters sedans, angry sedan owners, hotels, <laughs> and indescribable horrors, and Italian business owners. Now motivated, Nero takes to the city streets to probably do something eventually. Feeling bored, he takes to the phone and calls Amazon's single day delivery shipping at 11 15. <laughs> those drivers. As Nero makes his way to the church, he accidentally steps on one of those Amazon ordering buttons and buys an entire ambulance. <laughs> What did he say? Man, Lights I sure do hope something? you speak English. <laughs> oh, he's British. <laughs> Fucking dick. Unfortunately, this ambulance delivery man is 30 seconds over his bathroom break, forcing Nero to dispatch him <laughs> for the good of the company. You may notice the game is trying to teach me the alphabet over here, but I refuse to learn it. Devil May Cry's combat is not necessarily about surviving your enemies, but fucking owning them. And depending on how stylish you are, your letter rating will potentially go up to one of the higher letters. I don't know. I was a rebel in preschool. Nero conducts an epic battle with the monster, poking and prodding at him while he swings his titanic arms and breaks everything in sight. Eventually, the beast resorts to his ultimate attack, Vor, spitting Nero out into the streets and forming a Vor NATO to try and stop him. And just as it seems hopeless for our anime girl, Nero is able to find the fizz gun and slams the Amazon employee into the ground, killing him instantly. What the fuck is he saying? It was the moment that, after years of searching, had Twilight Sparkle finally realized <laughs> that friendship <laughs> was indeed magic. What the hell? <laughs> Die, bitch. Lasagna. Die, bitch. Lasagna. Pardon my delay. I was catching up on some reading. V, are you fucking my little pony? Yes, Nero. I <laughs> do have a disability. My IQ is too high. God damn it. <laughs> Okay. Nero proceeds <laughs> through the city on a zip line, starting a cutscene three fucking seconds after starting the level. Now you know what bats look like. He begins running towards <laughs> the tree, encountering enemies because this is a video game. Nero wanders into the sewers, and then out of the sewers, and then into the scissors ghost. This game has the consistency of an Escher painting. Nero kills the scissor man from Clock Tower, and then systematically loosens every single bookshelf. Feeling mischievous, Nero finds a phone and tells Nico that he's pregnant and that she needs to get there right away. He goes into a religious building for the second time today to find that God has given him the snake girl wife that he always prayed for. Isn't this what you always want? This boss fight is what I'd like to call Toho's Bizarre Adventure, since it involves dodging an ass load of projectiles and fighting your own death perception. He cuts into <laughs> a succulent snake body to find a fully intact woman, but the game doesn't care about her, so neither will I. Meanwhile, down <laughs> the street, Kylo oh Ren is walking his parrot. <laughs> Kylo Ren is forced to find a new operating system for his parrot. He does this by scanning around and watching his cat play with excessively alive yarn. V's gameplay <laughs> is very simple. You tell this guy and this guy to kill things for you, and when the time comes, Read. Read. <laughs> <laughs> the majority of the difficulty comes from assuring that his frail Slovenian body does not become crushed by the weight of his hollow bones. And whenever he feels like it, V can summon Bowser. Bowser is really strong. V goes shopping in New Longio for like three minutes before he calls tech support, claiming that he flattened the pins on his CPU. Upon hearing of this news, Linus Tech Tips arrives to challenge V, delivering the vengeful wrath of his three 12K cameras. Unfortunately, this is the worst boss in the game, and I can't say that I fought him well because V doesn't fight anything. Upon killing Linus Tech Tips, V opens the doors to Sears, but sees this guy and is like, Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I 
wish I was dead. V goes through Fallout 3 and is trapped by an anus, <laughs> at which point he is forced to fight through the anoids. He enters a construction site, but is trapped by the anus again. Do you see a pattern? Fortunately, V's fights look like a cartoon battle in a dust cloud. He encounters a giant bug, and I can't think of anything funny. Please don't put this in the script. I can't tell how, but I'm winning. V finally escapes the storm drain. See, that's And to celebrate, he know. calls Nico and tells her that he's a YouTuber, so she comes immediately to see him. <laughs> also, he's very handsome, and his voice sounds extremely cool. So anyways, I saw a cringe Doomer poster, and I thought to my trad self that I would show him as being a soy Wojak, and to add the correct amount of irony, what the are you troll face fucking was saying? Why <laughs> the stupid devil sword, you internet poison dumb fuck, before I grow a brain aneurysm? Damn, she was just about to miss my 60-minute presentation on the Warhammer 40k lore. Hello! <laughs> what was that about a devil sword? Nothing, it's not important. Anyways, do you use Reddit? V is now forced to battle the Arch Redditor, and to do this, he will need to use all of the skills that he has already used, such as dodging, flying, and watching. This boss fight is one of the best in the game, as he is forced to remain mobile, balancing the damage of his minions while overcoming the caffeinated super ranting of the Redditoid. Those are real words, I guess. But through mastery of these delegation skills, our hero puts up a legendary battle, and after an immense and prolonged struggle, he moves in for the kill and finally slays his horse. We killed his horse. Then he just walks away. V sprained his ankle or something. Meanwhile, down the street, Nero attempts to get into Sears and accidentally becomes Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Time to begin another shit boss. This time, he will be killing an imported giraffe before those bastards of the USDA can steal it from him. I'm not going to dwell on this. You hit his legs to go up, and when you go up, you hit him, and then he dies. <laughs> yeah. So now they're outside a subway station when V comes in. Yes, I know it doesn't make sense, and he's here to tell us some important information. You can't travel through here in a car. <laughs> So now we're entering Sears on foot, I guess. And contained within are the secret Geico Saboteurs. The Sears <laughs> has the great gimmick of introducing the Sears catalog, who is tasked with birthing affordable and great prices onto Nero, all of which he must fight with the urge to purchase. The primary gameplay of these encounters is eliminating the Sears catalogs while juggling the great deals that they produce. And with enough strength and dedication, Nero can save 50% or more on his car insurance. Please let me see my family, Geico Lizard. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Little Caesar's Pizza finds a phone and, as a joke, tells Nico that the McRib is back. You can't travel through here. Now with our presence in the level completely invalidated, we exit the Sears into the city and towards the stage to meet up with Kylo Cardenire, only to be Kylo Cardenire. I will end your fucking life. Oompa Loompa Dippity Dunk. <laughs> this game is better than Cyberpunk. Oompa this is fucking hilarious. Where'd you find these guys? I have rigged the entire stage to roll around like Hot Wheels. Huh? <laughs> Our heroes are now forced to fight the Oompa Loompas in one of the most crazy, chaotic, and fun boss battles of the entire game. Just listen to that music, dude. It's better than getting a YouTube collaboration with virtual YouTuber Sunamaki Watame. Please! Our heroes tear through the enemy. Probably, I, I can't really tell what's happening. Until only their boss remains, and then you kill him like a video game enemy. V, why did you rig the stage to roll around? It was to save time, Nero. What do you mean, save time? We don't have time for questions. Why not? A Redditor told me that there's a sword in that house, Nero. I have to get the sword! Yeah. Nero's path to reaching the Demon King is now laid before him, and he moves in to finally face him. Within one mission's length of walking distance, we took like 30 <laughs> minutes to get through a subway station, and Nero's just gonna traverse a town and walk up a tree in like two seconds. <laughs> tree. At the bottom of a root have Thing Tree, and in many enemies, the imposter is sus. Nero finally succumbs to four, effectively simulating a Chinese elevator as I struggle to narrate the 50 combat encounters. Now we are higher up the tree, and all it took was my sense of location, altitude, and timing. Nero struts in confidence only to encounter the long-dead soul of a loyal Shia militant who gracefully died in the name of the Ayatollah. Nero smacks it to death nearly instantly. That was a lot of build-up for a basic enemy. We go up into the four hole and then fight the Oompa Loompa boss for the second time in like 30 minutes. Only this time, I can tell what's happening because a V isn't here. Third time's the charm and four <laughs> times the harm as Nero finds a phone station. He then states that like, he is in need like of five. a tall discord mommy immediately. <laughs> now prepared, Nero finally moves in to rematch the Demon King urinative for the final time. Urinative. 
I finally come to stop your reign of terror and rescue Dante. My name is Kyle. Why do you keep coming here? <laughs> your taunting doesn't work on me, your anemia. Get the fuck out. It's time for the fight that we've all been waiting for as Nero struggles to battle the demon equivalent of a diabetic man stuck in his chair. The point of the fight is that Urizid is guarded by a magic crystal so he can continue being hooked up to an IV bag of monster energy. And to fight with, <laughs> Nero will first have to damage the crystal while juggling all of his attacks. And with only a sliver of health left and the crystal nearly destroyed, I die, so just pretend that I got him. <laughs> Fuck. You're not even a demon, you're just a little stupid guy. Making me get out of my goddamn Fox News chair. You hate me because I am beautiful, but if you got rid of that yee ass haircut, you may get some bitches on your dick. Or better yet, maybe <laughs> V will call your dog ass when he's done fucking with that cat or whatever. It's time for the real battle against Urizen to begin, unleashing all of the caffeine that he's accumulated. This fight is tough and requires all of the skills that you've mastered throughout your playthrough. Except, uh, this is mission 8 out of 20. Needless to say, this fight is slightly psychotic. Okay, seriously though, you have to get out of the house now. You have to leave the house and not come back. Mm -hmm. Who are you who dares interfere? <laughs> Two weeks earlier or something. Devil may cry. Lamp oil, rope, bombs, you want it? I think it's spreading. It's yours, my friend. Oh, fuck. Hey there, make yourself at home. My name is V, and there's a giant demon about to resurrect that I know about for reasons, and <laughs> I need your help to stop it. I have heard that exact fucking sentence. Stop talking like that. God. I have heard that exact fucking sentence four goddamn times now for like 20 years. Were you hmm. born yesterday? Yes. Yes. So you'll kill the demon? That sounds good. And also, I think you're really handsome and your tattoos look amazing and your voice <laughs> isn't stupid. And also, you're tall and have had sex at least once. We resume our perspective <laughs> on the not quite present through the eyes of V as he attempts to find the fabled Sword of Redditors. But to do so, he will have to watch other people fight through a gauntlet of enemies, involving many challenges, probably, as he pretends to struggle to the exit. But as V moves through the level, you notice a feeling of remorse and of nostalgia, wondering where this feeling will lead him. His only choice is to watch for as the level is played for him. Eventually, V comes upon three average white girls and also the sword. Amused for some reason, V is forced to interrupt the dance party of the Caucasoidal Femoids. <laughs> the control of the Starbucks is crazy and chaotic because you're using three guys to fight three guys, legally classifying it as an RTS. And like all white women, V's enemies are hard to read. But even harder to read are my own fucking attacks. However, V can read, and after hours of a, whatever this is, V reads a story where he wins the fight and the enemies die. <laughs> Shadow looks fierce there. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Please shut up for one second. We have two options available to us. Either we let Urizen liquefy Nero and turn him into a small slushy, or <laughs> I risk shish kebabbing Dante, which isn't that much of a choice. Now that I think about it, let's say it's a risk I'm willing to take. Last time on El Dante's Bizarre Star, our <laughs> heroes find themselves in grave danger as Nero yes! faces down Bowser from the Smash Brothers for control of his Koopa Hotels. V challenges Starbucks and beats white women with his menagerie of failed computers <laughs> and lasagna. And Dante, after destroying a Phillips CDI, is woken up from his two-week nap. Now reunited with his Reddit sword, El Diablo hmm. vows to stop Bowser and his sidekick, the Gary's Man, from growing a really big tree. And for all of my illiterate viewers, this is the second part of a two-part series on the video game Devil May Souls 5. If you haven't watched the first part, you will be confused enough to qualify as a congressman. Thusly, I have nailed the link <laughs> to the first part on the church doors below. Do not tell the Pope. Continuing our story, Dante has been awoken and is immediately harassed. <laughs> okay, you, first of all, fuck off. 
<laughs> Second of all, you a stoffel looking asshole. Pizza al dente does not wait for a little paisano Pizza such as yourself. Dante. What are you fucking saying? In the world of words, you either get with the flow or you take a second slow. Think about that one for a sec five. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you got some untreated scoliosis or some shit. Work on it. Fucking <laughs> skin disorder looking ass. Finally, we can resume our adventure as the crying devil, El Exterminador de Demonios. La Chupacabra is the most complicated character in the entire game, and explaining mm -hmm. him would be like delving into the hollow life lore. Why is the dog gay? But without giving a presentation on the <laughs> fundamentals of engineering, here are the basics. Dante has four distinct abilities that he can switch between. Trickster allows La Cucaracha to slide, slide to, to the, the left. Map. Swordmaster allows him <laughs> to beat women faster and better. Gunslinger allows him to more quickly engage fleeing civilians. And Royal Guard instantly wins the game. Also, you can switch between them like this. <laughs> But the most important aspect of playing as Papa John has gotta be his music. Listening to these tunes, Dante walks 30 feet and causes 9-11 twice. Moving oh, the ruins, Dante Jesus. goes to the Shree and prepares to save Nero when he's done with his casual stroll. Hey, bitch, catch. Yes, Cavalier. I'm going to depict you as a soy Wojak Dante. And your what next the fuck is he saying? Sure <laughs> Jack, and though you may block have me, you considered have taking a shout off. Bitch, give me your sword. Oh, don't worry, I can do that. Cope, cope, see, cope, cope, see, coping, coping, see. It's time for one of the most fun boss battles in the entire game. I say that a lot. This fight is <laughs> a pure, in your face test of skill with no bullshit movement mechanics. Oh, fuck. And to win, an expert bladesman is able to dodge left and right, sidestepping his attacks and swiftly punishing for a satisfying battle. But the true warriors are us are able to take him on face to face. Hmm. Nice, Perry. So Dante deletes Reddit forever while a motorcycle psychically assembles itself in the background. And as it turns out, inside every good Redditor is a gooder woman. That's not the phrase. <laughs> hey, look, V, it's another woman just like you. Go babysitter while your spine is fucked them out. Wait, you dumb fuck. This is just like crazy fuck. You gotta try it. Naturally, V, just like me on my first date, begins recanting the story of his birth. Three weeks ago, Dante's <laughs> brother, Thanos Prime, was attempting to survive the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And to do so, he just happened to find a sword, which is in no way related to Nero's missing arm. The synthesis <laughs> of man is his Chad self and his virgin self. No man is complete without both. But in an effort to save himself, he severed the two halves into their base states. And what emerged out the other side side was Urizen and V, which stands for virgin. <laughs> oh, I wonder what Dante is doing. I hope he gets to Nero soon instead of fucking with a bike. Now it's time to <laughs> fuck with a bike, which by the way makes Dante immune to being stunned. This new weapon works by being high risk, high reward as Dante and everyone else in the room is forced to get fucked whenever the weapon is used. So Dante <laughs> gets fucking all the way to the fountain, through the crypt, and to his house. He endangered the life of a child so that he can gauge the property value. Maybe rent it to a black family after he kills himself. <laughs> Because in the Devil May Cry universe, the only way to gain power is attempted suicide. <laughs> so, through the power of emo, Dante becomes Hype Beast Dante, possessor of the Hype grip. Beast. Then he fly. Why, why didn't he do that before? Yurison, I have flown in from off screen to finally defeat you. By the way, who's that whiny bitch in the background? <laughs> My name is fucking Kyle. Nice try, but names can't have sex. Jesus Christ, look at this fucking battle. It's got more particles than the beach. I've been keeping track, and this is the fourth time that we've had to fight Urin McGee in his stupid tree. <laughs> It's very difficult to tell what animations this tentacular fuck is going to puncture you with next. As well, Dante must overcome him constantly resummoning his crack crystal to fight you with. But armed with his new abilities, Devil Man Come Baby can overcome the challenge set before him and finally stop the gigantic stupid bitch liquid who's about to fuck up. Okay. You're fucking stupid, Dante. The tree is already growing into a bigger tree. Soon I shall have national park designation. <laughs> <laughs> Attacks me. I am literally getting to the bottom of this. Don't fall apart. <laughs> So Five just teleports to the top of the tree somehow and is like, Dante, we don't have time to spare. <laughs> Urizen will soon. Shut up, V. You're interrupting my Michael Jackson brain. Or what? I need this V. <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Nero. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> 
and now, with all three of our heroes conveniently in the same location, they split up again. Choose me <laughs> because I'm not stupid. We descend to the, <laughs> of the tree to stop Urizen from evading taxes, and to do so, we are armed with the Michael Jackson hat, which has the power to put a hat on anything, anything, <laughs> and has the power to fire currency at the enemy, which is a terrible idea. So I don't use it, and Dante takes his time walking down the stairs. Speaking of taking your time, it's now V's time to waste my time with his terminal scoliosis reaching critical levels. <laughs> v is forced to consume a peyote and perform a gauntlet of metaphorical challenges in an effort to save himself. Entering the light, oh god, my eyes, please stop it. V is now forced to choose which one of his pets to release first. Please don't choose the parrot first, or you might have to fight a boss using only the parrot. The rest is pretty simple. You get the lasagna, you use the lasagna. You get the Bowser, and you kill Mario. It's the way it is. This allows V to think away the pain of his curved spine. This lasts for all but three seconds when V finds the next boss. What the fuck is that noise? It sounds like someone's playing mumble rap. My entire character is just written to be angry, so I'll kill them out. Haha, uh -huh, don't kill V, so sexy, no. <laughs> I'm not gay. Why am I surrounded by fucking goblins? Zero initiates battle against the KFC Lorian Rimmel, whose main gimmick is access to the which lets her teleport. This boss involves a lot of movement and dodging, but leaves herself open to score many hits. Fortunately, Nero can score with her because he swings either way. With his sword, of course. Seriously, it's like she wants to die. <laughs> Oh no, V, your spine is too injured. Guess I gotta carry you myself. Fucking fine. <laughs> Donathan Taylor is tasked with further entry into the anus. There, he will have to fight a gauntlet of former enemies as he races to the bottom. These include the Oompa Loompas, BDSM, and Fia Fa Fa Fast Gorilla with his friend, Devil May Cry. But as Demi Lovato descends further into the devil, he notices that the devil may cold. With this knowledge, he investigates to its deepest reaches. Holy shit, it's an average sized pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> Only kings Sorry, Mr. Worldwide, but I don't speak Spanish. It's time to fight a literal nuclear blast. What the fuck? This is one of the best bosses in the entire game. I mean it this time. In addition <laughs> to hitbox pornography, this boss can transform himself and the arena to three unique styles. Lightning mode allows him to unlock the innate pitbull ability to throw cinder blocks. Fire mode activates his baby chewing instincts. And ice mode is what happens when he's forced to travel to an Alaskan Walmart. But just before the fight grows desperate, Che Guevara activates his Super Saiyan mode and finally slays the preschool leader. Hmm. Time to jump into your mom's cooch. Haha, look how funny I am. I'm so oh funny. <laughs> you are too late, Donatello. I have finally constructed the tax evasion apple. <laughs> once consumed, the paperwork will be sent within 14 <laughs> business days by my mediocre secretary. What do you even need this money for, huh, Virgil? It doesn't make any sense. You would not understand. Thousands of <laughs> dollars are stolen from me to build roads and orphanages. How else can decent men gatekeep build a bear workshop? <laughs> your brothers, Dante. You call me by the wrong name. My true name now no! is Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> so oh, Jeff God. <laughs> it's fucking delicious, Dante. I can already feel the burden of taxes <laughs> falling off of my body. It's time, Dante, to finally end this. The battle for America's revenue has just begun, <laughs> and Jeff isn't taking any fucking prisoners. Leading with his MMA bullshit, Jeff kicks Dante down and moves in aggressively, but within minutes begins to draw on the power of mandatory overtime, sacrificing the blood of his workers to cast some mystical bullshit. Blood After of his workers. Of Dante's sick breakdancing, Jeff activates his beast mode and begins doing sick backflips, firing fucking lasers, and just walking really menacingly. However, with the help of his sick moves, Dante can put a gigantic hat on him, which instantly kills him, trust me. <laughs> what are you touching, Nero? Nothing. Oh, good, you found a doctor. Dante, what the <laughs> fuck is that? That's my brother. You're fucking what? Yeah, he was trying to get away from taxes. I don't know, I stopped him. What's V doing? <sighs> Get back, V. I'm gonna Al Capone this bitch. Fuck off, Fed. I'm about to die. Have you ever heard of the Make-A-Wish Foundation? <laughs> oh. Now I know, Jeff. 
I know that it's hard letting poor people into Build-A-Bear workshop, <laughs> especially if they're Italian. Is V racist? But <laughs> let me introduce you to a concept that I'm a big fan of. I'm sure you'll love every second of it. It's very popular on the internet, and it's called for... Wait a fucking second. <laughs> Heroes Under Rage, you can't do that! Heroes Under Rage, can't do that! Yeah, he's, he's let's, let's How does he look so much younger than Dante? Like Dante has seen some shit, but this guy yeah. has literally been to hell and back many times. I've left my theme song running. There we go. Yo, that was sick. Oh, hey there, brother Dante. I would totally fight you right now, but I would decimate you so hard that I would win and you would die. So uh, later. Hmm. I uh, gotta go to the top of the tree. Goodbye. Oh, and Nero. Tell your mom that I'm not fucking paying. Did he just mention my mom? No. What did he mean by that, Dante? What was he supposed to pay to my mother? Nothing. Why won't you answer me, Dante? <laughs> Look, I have to save Build a Bear. And why can't I help you, huh? Why can't I help? He's your father! <laughs> have fun, Nero. Fucking dick. So after <laughs> two minutes and fourteen seconds of cutscenes in this video, yes, I timed it. Dante does his off-screen <laughs> teleport to the top of the tree, racing to the end to fight his brother in a final battle. Yet standing in his way for some reason is the Bowser Squad, and they decide to fight for some reason that I don't understand. The battle begins as Dante juggles every angry lore enthusiast typing up a comment right now, and their rage is reflected as this is one of the hardest bosses in the entire game. Dante is forced to dodge the lightning of Windows Vista, the aggression of Lasagna, and sometimes remember that Bowser exists. Now I know that there's proof of God's existence existence because Satan is clearly real. And although Dante may cry and doesn't want to narrate this boss fight, he can stop writing the script and go for a walk into the eternal darkness. And when he returns, the boss is just dead. Trust me. <laughs> have you tried turning it off and back on again? I'm a technical <laughs> genius. Hey, Virgil, do you really have to bring the plastic chair? <laughs> yes, <it's too laughs> the plastic chair, Dante. It comforts me. Well, you're going to have to fucking sell it to pay for the child support, Virgil. Oh, is that the case? Yes, you cut off the arm of your own son. And I'd do it again. You're gonna pay, Virgil. Let me be clear, Dante. I will never pay. Hey, yeah, Eddie. is a crime, Virgil. It's an obligation. <laughs> Nero. Oh, exactly 30 seconds earlier. Hello, you've reached the <laughs> You are currently located in Florida. Where our laws don't apply. <laughs> Hey, listen, there's this IRS guy named Dante Devil. Can you give me his contact info? There is no IRS employee by that name. Thank you for calling. That motherfucker. Dante never <laughs> worked for the IRS to begin with. They're both exactly the same. And they're going to kill each other over who gets to steal Virgil's money. They were so blinded by their thousands that they never stopped to think what they were doing or who they hurt along the way. But that ends here. I have to stop them. I have to make Virgil pay! Such an epic shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Oh. You two will never agree, and I know that, but I can't let you kill each other because you two are two sides of the same coin. Your blood. Stay out of it. Bitch, I'm talking. <laughs> the money you can make if you look past your differences and rob people together. <laughs> I think you make a good point, Dero. And it starts with you paying for my child support, Virgil. <laughs> 
<laughs> Virgil? It's finally time for the battle to conclude the game about Virgil hiring Virgil's brother and Virgil's son to defeat Virgil. <laughs> Virgil featuring Virgil. And to win this battle, Nero steals the ox cord from Virgil and plays this sick beat. Fortunately for Nero, he can employ the Machiavellian counter-stabbing method. And using his new twig form, he's finally able to twig fight form. Then I list things that he does to kill Virgil comedically and Virgil dies Lamau. Do you accept payment and shares? Maybe, but we're running out of time. Our national park has begun expanding the state of Florida, and soon we'll consume Walt Disney World. <laughs> Kinda like that. You're right. We have to stop Florida. Agreed, brother. Let's get going, as long as I keep my taxes. W wait a minute. What are you gonna do? We have no choice but to cut off Florida from the rest of the country with a comically large saw. It's only <laughs> to protect humanity. But, but if you do that, you'll be trapped in Florida forever. Why do you think Virgil's going? There's no income tax. But there's- <laughs> <laughs> Next time I see you, Nero, you better not be such a pussy bitch. Later. <laughs> I always wanted to go to Disney World. Oh, and Nero, here's the child support. It should cover all of the costs. <laughs> Wait, costs? It'll sell for a lot. <laughs> what the fuck? It is my little pony. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks like everything's back to normal, though I don't understand the book thing. I think your dad scammed you. Hello? Hello, this is the federal government speaking. We found some unusual activity with your accounts so and we'll be claiming your child support as taxes. What? Oh. Child support. Tell Obama there's no way I'm paying for that. Oh, you won't be paying, you say. That's okay. We have our way. You know what? I've been thinking for a while. Virgil might have had a point. <laughs> Patreon members who are now trapped in Florida forever. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, another good video by, or a couple of videos uh, by Maxor. Um, I always la <laughs> appreciate the humor and the editing style. Uh, you know, some of the some of the meme jokes, or whatever, I didn't really get. And um, but you know, overall, I liked his uh, his summary. He clearly did not like V. <laughs> I think I'm getting more attuned to Maxor's style because mm -hmm. I feel like I got a lot more of this than the Doom previous Eternal. Max or one. Now, part of that is probably because we've actually played Devil May Cry 5. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. I, I appreciate his humor. I kind of feel like, oh God, like like sort of like having gone on a Clockwork Orange trip after watching his videos because it is so sensory overload with yeah, stuff. That, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like there's so much coming at you so fast, both in the visuals and in how he speaks and all the little like nuggets that he's dropping in mm -hmm. uh, on his um, voiceover that like, as we come out of it, I'm just like, Ooh. Okay, now the world is I... normal. Not things are just flying at you. Yeah. I'm like, what did I just see? But I, I really enjoyed that. I loved, I loved how he laced in some, some really funny and, and spot on social commentary. <laughs> um, I love how he mocked the game in, in exactly the right ways. I mean, yeah. I say that as somebody who enjoyed the game, so that's not to criticize the game, but that saying, like, I appreciate. I appreciate his his loving jabs at it. Um, the best part was when we said the car can't go down here, and then later they show the car break through. <laughs> and yeah, I just uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, agreed. Uh, another good video. You know, it was cool seeing his uh, his gameplay as well because you know we were uh, novices at the games, and um, so some of his gameplay was a lot better than than ours. You know, the different kind of styles that he had to, had to do, and uh, you know he obviously liked all the the bosses that that. We had to play most of the bosses. Some of them you said were, were weren't great, but I mean, it seemed like he still he really enjoyed the game as well. He had a good use of the cowboy hat. Yeah, I was surprised, but I kind of appreciated that he didn't use the dead weight joke with Nero. Yeah, because it's so prevalent in the game that it would be such an easy one to go to, and yet he was able to mock the characters in various different ways without having to go to what could possibly be overplayed if he'd done it because it is so apparent in the game. Good call. You'll let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want our uh, Devil May Cry playthrough or our Devil May Cry reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got playlists there for you. Thanks so much for checking out this super sneaky Sunday for Devil May Cry 5, an incorrect summary uh, by Max Rubber. Just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. Feeling dunk. Feeling dunk. <laughs>